Andrew McCart, IFL TV, probably sponsored by Everlast, and it's always good to be joined by my good friend Ben Davison. Ben, we're here in Newcastle. It seems like I always catch you in nearly every place on the planet. Uh, you're a busy, busy man. Uh, but you're here in Newcastle, you've got two of your young charges on the bill when Pat McCormick and Mark Dickinson. We'll start with Pat, silver medalist in the Olympics in Tokyo. How good, everyone's raving about this kid, how good can he be? Yeah, phenomenal, you know. Um, when he first come, come into the gym, he looked like what he was, you know, a top, top class uh, amateur, Olympic silver medalist um, that needs work to make a transition to the professional ranks. And um, that transition's been extraordinary. Um, surprised me, really surprised me. Um, I was actually saying to Lee, um, you know, how much Pat had come on in a short space of time. And Lee was shocked when he came down. He was like, wow, you know, I didn't expect that um, when I'd said to him about how much he'd come on. So, yeah, in the gym, he looks like a world champion. Um, and it's just about experience um, and those kind of things to be able to transcend that into looking like a world champion under the lights and not just fighting for a world title, not just winning a world title, but becoming a long reigning world champion. Probably the same for Mark and Pat and maybe even Luke as well is when these guys come through they're already in the six rounders and they're already young kids they're already hungry to face some of the bigger names in their third, fourth, fifth fight but for you and Lee how is it how, how difficult is it to rein them in a little bit I'm sure Pat he's, he mentioned to me the competition has just dropped now from fighting a two time Olympian at the Olympics and now he's fighting in his pro even though it's his pro debut the competition's dropped and the competition will have dropped for for the next maybe four or five fights so how do you maintain that mentality that it's you don't have to fight the big guys right away in the pro ranks yeah it's about experience I've got to be honest I probably shouldn't say this but you're not going to see the best of Pat McCormack boxing Danny Mendoza that might come and haunt you one day that saying that but you know you're not going to see the best of him boxing the Danny Mendoza um, but you'll see the best of him boxing the better quality mm. um, but of course once you take it, get past a certain level it's hard to come back so we'll get this one out of the way um, and then you know we'll start to look at the domestic scene um, for Pat to start you know making a bit of a statement around the domestic scene um, and go from there really because you know his last fight was against the double Olympic champion now he's boxing um, a journeyman and sometimes you know it's difficult to look good when someone's not coming to, to so much to win and coming to survive um, so, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll sit down with the team after this one, have a look, and um, get some guys that are probably a few levels above what this guy is, so that for the better for Pat's development, but also so that people can really see what he's about. The welterweight division is probably the money division, but underneath the heavyweight division, it's the reason that being Floyd Mayweather made it, Pacquiao made it that division. It's when you look at the guys in it, it's a, it's a nasty, tasty division. Whether the guys like Spence and Crawford and Ugas all the way up there, you've got Conor Benz uh, domestically. Obviously, way ahead of of uh, Pat just now. But when you when you see these names in that division, when you look at that welterweight division, it's a it's a tasty di division for Pat to be add his name to, isn't it? Yeah, take experience out of the way. His skill set belongs amongst those guys, um, and it's just experience. It's just experience. Um, so he will get there, um, but of course, along the way, it's, it's about having the right fights at the right time, um, so that he can build his profile, work on things that he's working on in the gym, and practice those under the lights because that's a huge part of development. There's no point in working things in the gym and then all of a sudden taking a fight where you need to do something completely different. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's going to be an, an exciting career, um, an exciting path, and you know he will be a world champion as long as he dedicates himself to the sport. On to Mark Dickerson, then he sort of—I think he blamed you for not getting the stoppage in his, his last fight. Uh, where can you elaborate on that? Yeah, like Mark blew away his first fire, his first opponent inside 30 seconds, and I just knew. You know, his mentality even admitted that when I went into that fight, I thought, OK, it's a durable guy, I'm probably going to go six rounds. Um, so I knew the next fight there was going to be the complete opposite mentality of, I want to blow this fella out of there because he doesn't get stopped much. Mm. Um, so I wanted to teach him that lesson very early on. I knew the guy was a durable guy and 
there was slim chances of Mark getting him out of there. Only ever been stopped once by a light heavyweight, and Mark's a middleweight, uh, a very big punching light heavyweight as well. So very early on in 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 the guy's career. So it was a lesson that I wanted to teach Mark early on. You know, I want I think that Mark can be and will be moved pretty quickly. So you have to learn them lessons pretty quickly. And you know, I remember he come back after three rounds or after two rounds. He says to me, I'm going to stop trying to knock him out now. You know, he learned that lesson pretty quickly. So. Um, yeah, again, you know, it's, it's about development and that was a, a scenario and a situation Mark had to go through to learn a lesson. Well, it's good to learn in only, in only a second fight as well. 100% because now in this fight he's now boxing a guy that's 11 wins, 8 knockouts, 4 losses and 3 draws. So for a guy that's boxing in his third fight it's rare to see someone boxing in their third fight, someone with a record like that. But I've got confidence in Mark's mentality going into the fight. I know that he's the better fighter going in there with the right mindset because he's learned that lesson in only his second fight. Going on to you Ben, like I said you've got a massive stable now with some elite world champions, you've got prospects coming through, Olympians coming through, you're, you're a busy busy man, like I said to you you were in Dubai last week, then you flew over to uh, London, then you, now you're back in the North East, uh, I mean how do you find the time, you're still enjoying it because sometimes this can wear wear on you a little bit, uh, but how are you finding it all? Obviously, people don't look at the, they only see Ben on the camera doing 10 minute interviews here on the press conferences. They don't see the, the background and what's happening, but how are you finding everything in, in terms of the traveling, not spending time with your, your wife and stuff like that? So it must be difficult. Yeah, February, March has been a manic couple of months, but um, it's just part and parcel of it. Unfortunately, you know, two of the main guys in Josh Taylor and Lee Wood had a fight that was two weeks apart as well as all the all, all these lads getting out as well. So it's been a very difficult time. But often with world champions, they're, they're only boxing probably twice a year. So, um, you know, it's not as... It's, it's dem very, very demanding for that 12, 14 weeks, whatever it is. Um, and then they may have a period out of the gym or when they're in, they're still training, but it's not preparing for a fight with the same intensity that it has to be for 10, 12 weeks leading up to a fight. So. Yeah, of course it's difficult, but uh, you know, help a Lee and help a Barry. Um, we're getting the job done, and getting the job done well, and getting the results. Still enjoying it then? Yeah, of course. Listen, <laughs> we love it. Absolutely love it. From every, from Pat making his debut, Mark having his third fight, Lee Wood defending his world title, Josh defending his undisputed, um, to going over to America soon for Devin. We love all of it. Um, Luke making his debut soon. Um, you know, every every end of the spectrum, we love it. Definitely, well, Ben, there's like, the ones left us with only three here because Lee Wiley said I've still not got him on camera yet, but I'm sure I will one day. Um, but I'll see you Friday night. That's how it is. Let me see. That's why he always wears them hats, isn't it? Is, is he put some beard down on that beard as well? Is that going less grey? Yeah. Does dye his beard? Does he? Does dye his beard? There you go. Well, Ben, listen, enjoy this fight week. Uh, I'm looking forward to Pat McCormick and Mark Dickinson. Very, very good prospects coming through. Obviously, with the pedigree of, of Pat McCormick, but. Uh, good to see you again, my friend, and I'll catch you on Friday night. For sure, mate. Thank you, man. Thank you.